Hello, my name is Brianna Howland, and I am a junior in the Communication De Disorders Department here at Calio. My presentation today is on Treacher Collins Syndrome and is to inform others about what the syndrome is, what it looks like, what people with the syndrome can do to treat it, and where they can go to find help. Treacher Collins Syndrome is a congenital abnormality that occurs before birth in about 1 in 50,000 people. It usually affects the TCOF1 gene and sometimes affects POLR1C and POLR1D genes. These genes help with rRNA production. The syndrome occurs with when there's low rRNA production. While the gene can be passed to a child from the parents having the syndrome, it can also be a random mutation as it can be both dominant and recessive. Treacher-Collins syndrome affects the facial structures of the child. It can cause their eyes to be slanted downwards. They could have some vision loss. Their lower jaw could be smaller than it should be, which is called micronathia. They could have missing small or deformed ears, which could cause them to have a conductive hearing loss. A cleft lip or palate is common with Treacher Collins syndrome, resulting in eating and breathing problems. These children could need a tracheotomy tube to help with breathing. The pictures on here show the physical symptoms on children, both from the front and side views. You can see how the ears, eyes, and other facial bones are formed. Children with this disorder typically have normal intelligence. While there is currently no treatment for Treacher Collins syndrome, some of the symptoms can be individually treated. There are several surgeries that can be completed early in a child's life. A palatoplasty can be performed to fix the child's cleft palate, closing the gap in it. A tracheostomy could be needed to insert a tracheotomy tube if the child has severe breathing problems. There are various craniofacial reconstructive surgeries to move the facial bones up to where they should be. There are also other treatments that are not surgeries. The child could need orthodontics such as braces to move the teeth where they should, where they should be. Speech therapy could be needed to help with effects from the cleft palate, helping to get the child used to using their tongue and correct placements for correct speech, where they may not have needed to from the cleft. A hearing exam should be done to see if the child has a conductive hearing loss. There are many support groups for families to go in order to find advice, research, specialists, and charities to help their children. Some of these charities are Changing Faces, Children's Craniofacial Association, and Philly Faces. Changing Faces is a charity that offers advice and guidance. It also helps families, especially children, meet others with similar circumstances by offering workshops where they can meet each other. Children's Craniofacial Association helps families get the help they need both emotionally and financially. The website shows some charities for people with craniofacial syndromes. It provides people's families to people that can talk, they can talk to for any emotional needs. Philly Faces is another place that families can go for the support and resources they need to help their child, similar to changing faces. Thank you for listening to my presentation.